Hello po, kumusta po kayong lahat? Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Thank you, Valius family, for leading the worship today. Headed by Jay, Jovi, Jaya, and Jam. And also kay John, thank you for that wonderful number. Oh, tang ganda ng medley. Oh, that wonderful cross. The grace of God was shown to us. So our topic can I was derived from from the a new series po natin yung topic po natin this month was derived from last resurrection sunday the way of the cross the way to victory doon po natin kinuha yung victorious christian living the victory of our lord on the cross became our victory his resurrection became our resurrection as well And the cross is the dividing line of human history. Yung ginagamit po nating Gregorian calendar, <clears throat> meron po ang BC, AD, Anyo Domini. So before the cross or after the cross. <laughs> so does the cross has some done something good to you? Does the cross has done something to you? Meron ba nagawa ang cross sa inyo? Is our message anchored before the cross or after the cross? Victorious Christian living is the title of our series this month. Don't you know that you are called by the Lord to be a success? To enjoy wealth, to enjoy health, and to enjoy a life of victory. It is not the Lord's desire that you live a life of defeat, poverty, and failure. He has called you to be the head and not the tail. So, how do we experience this life of victory? It's through the grace of God. Many believers today are defeated because they are struggling to qualify themselves for God's blessing by their own works, by their own effort. Sabi po ng Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Grace is the act of God. And faith is our response to grace. Grace is the act of God. And faith is our response to grace. Our faith to the finished work of our Lord Jesus, yung ginawa po ng ating Panginoon sa cross. How, how do we respond? Is dahil sa pamamagitan ng ating pananampalataya sa ginawa niya sa cross. At sabi po ng Romans chapter 5, verse 17, Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign, will reign in life through the one. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Kaya po yung self-effort natin will rob you of reigning in life by His grace. You cannot earn your salvation. You cannot earn your healing or your financial breakthrough by your own efforts. Pamagitan ng iyong lakas lamang. Dahil lagi po natin sinasabi, without Him, I can do nothing. You cannot add to that is already finished and complete there is a lot of confusion and wrong believing in the church today because many Christians read their Bibles without rightly dividing the old and new covenants they don't realize that even some of the words which Jesus spoke in the in the Gospels yung pong Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are part of the old covenant At maging si, si John the Baptist was, uh, sabi ng mga scholars, was also called the, the, the first and the last prophet, prophet of the Old Covenant or the Old Testament. They were spoken before the cross as he had not yet died. The New Covenant begins only after the cross when the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. So, to reign in life, firstly, we have to renew our mind. Sabi po ng Romans chapter 12, verse 2, 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Bakit napakahalaga, that, napakahalaga po that we, ha, we, we have to renew. We need to renew our mind. We need to renew our thinking. We need to renew our thinking and remind ourselves that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Dahil sa Romans chapter 5, verse 17, sabi po doon, Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one. We will reign in life with victory through the one, Jesus Christ. Well, we grow up in a world that believes yung tinatawag na merit system. Since our childhood, uh, we are taught, tayo tinuturoan na na kailangan you've got to be good in order to get this. You need to have good grades pag ikaw ay nag-aaral na. Para magkaroon ka ng medals, magkaroon ka ng awards, para you will be accepted. Even in our Christian walk, you need to do, to do so many things. To follow, memorize, attend, etc. We are bombarded with so many rules and regulations that is so impossible at times to accomplish. So, yun po yung tinatawag natin, do good, feel good. Get good para maka- magkaroon ka. Makuha mo ito. Because you're not able to get all these things, you condemn yourself. There are many believers who are suffering from sicknesses and diseases because of guilt and condemnation from the past. Whether or not there is any basis for their guilt and condemnation, the guilt and condemnation are still destructive. Nakakasira po ang pagkakaroon ng guilt and condemnation. That is why the gospel is so powerful. Gospel, good news. It is the good news of God's grace and forgiveness that frees us. Pinapalayan niya tayo, the believer, from every sense of feeling dirty or condemned and gives him the power to break free from the vicious circle of condemnation and sin. Well, condemnation, sabihin ko, condemnation kills. But the Spirit gives life. It's time to let go of the guilt and receive your forgiveness, your freedom in Christ. Hallelujah! Well, sa Romans chapter 5, verse 18, makikita natin doon, Sabi doon sa New Living Translation, Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. But, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. In addition to being aware of, of the nakedness of their bodies, doon po sa Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, a change occurred in their soul. Yung soul po uh, is made up of our mind, the will, and the emotions. When Adam and Eve transgressed, they had a change of mind. So, andun yung condemnations, a sense of guilt and shame. Attack their minds and introduce fear into their lives. At sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 10, kinonfirm niya ito. Sabi doon, the Lord called to Adam. And Adam's response was, I heard you walking in the garden. So, I hid. Nagtago ako. I was afraid because I was naked. So, condemnation became a powerful force connected to the sin of man. Many in the church understand that sin has been defeated. However, not so many realize that its companion, yung kasama nito, yung condemnation, likewise, should have no place in the life of a believer. In fact, some believers actually embrace condemnation by allowing themselves to feel bad 
even after they have repented, kay tumingi na ng kapatawaran, they feel bad. Because feeling bad becomes a way of showing that they are serious about being sorry and wanting to change. What they don't realize is by continuing to uh, feel bad, they are subconsciously trying to earn their forgiveness. They are trying to earn something that was freely given. Na yung kapatawaran ay walang kabayaran, binigay na ng Panginoon. Pero they're trying to earn it. So, guilt and condemnation is the number one robber of peace today. Ninanakaw niya ang kapayapaan ng isang tao. A born-again believer has been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Ibig pong sabihin, that means he is in the right standing with God. God does not look at a person and see all the mess-ups, lahat ng kanyang mga uh, nagawang mali of his life. But He chooses to look at that person in the light of Jesus. What God sees when He looks at that person and what He sees when He looks at Jesus is the same thing. Ang nakikita na po ng ating Diyos ay yung ginawa ng ating Panginoon sa atin. Nakikita niya po si Jesus. Kaya sabi po ng Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Why, why did God include the word now? Kahit po tanggalin natin yon, remove it, and the statement seems much the same. But as always, God was trying to protect us from something the enemy would use to harm us. The only place you can truly be free of condemnation is in the present. Kaya nga, now is in the present. The enemy will always try to take you back to past mistakes. Papaalala niya po sa atin yon. But if you begin to think about the things you have done in the past, even things you have asked and received for forgiveness, pinatawad ka na nga ng Panginoon, condemnation will try to sneak in. God forgiving us is one thing. Forgiving ourselves is quite another. Pinatawad na po tayo ng Panginoon. Kaya magkaroon po tayo ng renewal of the mind. We have to forgive even ourselves. Because condemnation kills. Because it destroys our confidence that God will do what He said He will do in His Word. We have trouble believing God really loves us because condemnation makes us feel unlovable. This leads to breakdown in our faith because according to Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, faith works by love. At napakaganda po nito sa 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 7 to 9. Now if the ministry that brought death was engraved in letters of stone came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, transitory though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? Hallelujah! The good news, the gospel of grace. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been made righteous in Christ. Hallelujah. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Because of what the Lord has done on the cross. Condemnation, guilt, shame. It's done. It is finished. He has given us that freedom. He has given us uh, that right, right standing with God. We are the righteousness in God, in Christ. Kaya tandaan po natin ito mga kapatid. Every time condemnation sneak in into our minds. Pag naalala po natin yung guilt, yung shame, yung condemnation. Let's remind ourselves. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Dahil yun po ang sabi ng kanyang salita. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! We are victorious. We will reign in life with victory because of the one, 
Jesus Christ. So yun po, we have to renew our mind. And secondly, we are to reign as kings and priests. Sabi po ng Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Sabi po ng Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, Sabi rin ng chapter 1 verse 6, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. As kings, we have to reign in life. For if by one man's offense, death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we will reign in life as kings. And as priests, we, 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 we are the royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. We are to offer up to God sacrifices of praise. And we have to give uh, our talents, our lives unto Him. We have to pray in behalf of others as priests. Uh, sabi, sabi po ng, ng Romans chapter 12 verse 1, we have to offer sacrifices of praise. That is our worship. That is our service unto the Lord. Sabi po ng 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. And let, let us not neglect yung pagiging, pagbibigay din natin sa Panginoon. So even in this uh, hard uh, situation, mahirap pong pumunta sa church, mahirap pong uh, hindi natin madala kaagad ang ating um, uh, pagbibigay or even our tithes and our offerings, let us make a way na ito'y ipunin po lamang natin and the time will come, baka next month po, pwede na ulit tayong mag face to face, we can give we can give unto our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For God is pleased with such sacrifices. Well, uh, meron pong pangyayari sa 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6 to 8. Basahin ko po ng mabilisan lamang, sabi doon, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring me the ephod. Please bring me the ephod here to me, sabi ni David. And Abiathar brought the ephod. Yung ephod po is a sleeveless garment worn worn by a Jewish priest. Binigay po niya, uh, to David, binigay po ng ifat. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, the Lord answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Makita natin that si David is a king. And he put on an ephod, the inquired of the Lord. He became priest at the same time, a king. So y yun po yung ginawa ni David, and he inquired of the Lord. Makikita natin sa, sa verse 2 ng chapter 22 ng 1 Samuel, and everyone was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. At sabi po doon, So he became a captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. Marami po. Para pong yun nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran ngayon. Everyone was in distress because of this pandemic. 
At sa hirap po ng buhay, everyone was in debt, may pagkakautang, and everyone was discontented. They gathered around David. Uh, yung binasa natin kanina, and they were about to stone him. But sabi rito, so he became a captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. And yun nga po, nung sinuot po niya yung ephod, he inquired of the Lord. Nag-inquire po siya sa Panginoon. Shall I pursue? Sabi, sabi ni David, shall I pursue them? And the Lord answered, Yes! Sabi ng Panginoon, Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. At yun po ang nangyari. To make this story short, doon po sa, sa verse 18 ng 1 Samuel chapter 30, So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David even rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking. Either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them, David recovered all. Alam niyo po kung sumuko si David, if he did not become a captain of their situation, marahil hindi po nila mababawi lahat yung nawala sa kanila because they have been attacked, inatake po sila and uh, kinuha po, sinunog, yung mga, mga lahat po ng ari-arian nila. But David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. You know what? It's not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit, says the Lord. So we are maintaining the victory that Christ has already done for us. It's His strength. It's His power. It's His might. And katulad po na King David, we are victors, not victims. We are captains, not captives. We are captains of the of our situation. Maybe some of you has lost a lot in this time, lalo lalo na this pandemic. Your job, your business, your even your place of worship, even your loved ones, because of this COVID-19. Like King David, his ma- even his men, they cried before the Lord. It's okay to cry, to pour out yung nararamdaman natin. Sometimes you couldn't sleep thinking about your situation. Lord, paano na? So many questions. But you need to strengthen, encourage yourself before the Lord. Hindi na po natin kailangan magsuot pa ng ifat because we reign as kings and priests. You can still rejoice because you are more than conquerors in Christ. Higit na mananagumpay. We are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory because we are victorious in Christ. I don't know what you are going through today, but like King David, let us refuse to be captives, but be a captain of our situations, victors not victims. And sabi ng revelation yung binasa natin kanina and hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father for Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the great high priest and we are co-heirs with Him. What do you have in your heart today? You have Jesus the hope of glory. And if you don't have Jesus yet in your heart and you want to make Him the Lord and Savior of lo- your life, why not try Jesus? Why not invite Jesus to come into your life today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is our hope. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We are to renew our mind. We are to reign as kings and priests. And lastly, we are resurrected and seated with Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sabi po ng Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Sa NIV, babasahin ko po. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. 
in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6 verse 5 For if we have been united with him in death like his we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Ang ganda po ng pag ng Amplified Version ng Romans chapter 6, verse 5. And He raised us up together with Him and made us sit down together, giving us joint sitting with Him. Katabi po natin na nakaupo ang ating Panginoong Jesus in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know what, perhaps ang napakaganda pong illustration ay yung we are seated uh, next beside, parang side by side. We are seated. You know what, when we are seated, we, we feel more relaxed. Yung tinatawag nga nila laging uh, chillax. It doesn't mean we are lazy. Hindi po ibig sabihin, natamad tayo. Uh, because when you finish something, like pag tayo po yung nag-paint, when you uh, f- uh, finish painting yung obra, yung obra mo, ay you put down the brush. Pero dahil tapos na eh, it is completed. At baka pag sinobrahan mo pa, ay hindi na siya maganda. So, ganun po. Uh, it is done, it is finished. Yung ginawa na po ng ating Panginoon sa cross. So, when he said it is finished, salvation is done, healing is done. Health, yung wealth, the grace of God, the abundance of grace is done. Ibinigay na po natin ng Panginoon. So, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Yung po dahil tapos na po eh. Hindi na po kailangan dagdagan pa yon. Hindi na po kailangan ulitin pa yon. Dahil tinapos na ng ating Panginoon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But perhaps the greatest message of our perfect victory uh, over the adversary is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. Sabi, sabi doon, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe? According to the working of His mighty power, which He wrote in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Pinagay na po natin sa atin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Even the works of the enemy. Hallelujah! Sin and death, where is your sting? Napagtagumpayan na po ng ating Panginoon. God has lifted us above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Not only in this age, sabi ng ating binasa, but in that which is to come. Hallelujah. He put all things in subjection under our feet. Jesus gave us the legal right to use of His name. Panggamitin ang Kanyang pangalan. That's why when we pray, when we ask, we, we, we ask in Jesus' name. When we pray, in Jesus' name, be healed in Jesus' name. Because there's power in that name. Hallelujah. There, is, there isn't anything too hard for God. God's ability is the ability that He gives to us. So His resurrection is the proof of our right to reign over Satan, to reign over the principalities, over demons. He was raised because He had conquered Satan in our stead so that we should no longer live in fear and of the unseen forces of the darkness. That is our victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We will reign in life. We will reign victorious because of what the Lord has done on the cross. 
Well, the climax of redemption was the sitting of the Lord Jesus after He had been made sin, after He had paid the penalty of our sin, after He had suffered all that justice demanded of us, then Christ with us arose from the dead. We are raised with Him. He declared we were seated together with Christ and raised us up with Him and made us to sit with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This was the highest honor that God had ever conferred upon man. The Son became a man, identified Himself with the human race, delivered the human race from the authority of Satan, and carried His blood into the Holy of Holies to make the eternal redemption. Then He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. We have a man seated at God's right hand. He is our representative. He is there to represent us. Every time po na may parun tayong, when we, we go to God in prayer, He's the one interceding for us. This is the crowning event in redemption. A man seated at God's right hand. And that man is the head of the new body, the church. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And we are seated with Him. Hallelujah in heavenly places, sabi doon. Not only are we seated in the highest position in the universe, but we are also blessed with every spiritual blessing that is necessary to maintain our place as members of His glorious body. Hallelujah! In the mind of God, every one of us in Christ now, He sees us in Him. When we go to the throne of grace in prayer, it is as though Jesus were going there, for we go in His name. Hallelujah! We can see our redemption is, com is a complete Finish, finish thing. If Christ sat down at God's right hand, it is because the Father accepted Him and accepted what He did for us. The fact that He is seated there is the seal of our acceptance in the Beloved. We have been accepted in the Beloved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, for what you have done on the cross. Hallelujah. So Hebrews po, chapter 4. Uh, it speaks about the Sabbath rest for His people. After God completed His creation, He rested. Kung malala niyo po yung after the creation, He rested. He did not create again after that. Kaya everything that we need, everything that a man need is already provided. That's why He rested after the creation. It doesn't mean that God is weary nor tired. Hindi po napapagod ng ating Diyos. But, and you know what? Even after our Lord finished His work of redemption on the cross, He rested, He is seated at the right hand of the Father because salvation is already complete. Because the finished work of the Lord is complete. Hallelujah. Tapos na. It is finished. Everything that we need is already provided by the Lord. Sabi ko kanina, salvation, healing, provision is done. Andun na yun. So, ano yung response natin sa grace ng Panginoon? Faith is our response to the grace of God. We receive the abundance of His grace. And faith is our response to His grace. Alam natin na ang mga Israelites did not receive, did not enter to their rest, to the promised land because of their unbelief. Kung babasahin na po natin yung sa Hebrews chapter 4 na yon. So, anong ibig kong sabihin dito mga kapatid? We are victorious in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have to renew our mind. We are to reign as kings and priests. And we are resurrected and seated with Him in the heavenly places. So, we are not fighting for victory anymore. We are maintaining the victory that Christ has already done for us. Hallelujah! So, we are to renew our thinking. 
we are in Christ. We are highly favored, greatly blessed, and deeply loved by the Lord. We are victors, not victims. We have to be captains of our situation, not captives. We are the head and not the tail. We are destined to victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I challenge you today. Receive His abundance of grace. Receive His finished work on the cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for what you have done on the cross for us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for we are victorious. We are victorious. We are more than conquerors because of what you have done on the cross for us. And kung meron pong nanonood ngayon, Panginoon, at nangangailangan ng, ng salvation. He needs you as His Savior. Lord, I pray you will just touch Him, Lord. Hallelujah. If you are that one, brother, if you are that one, sister, if you need Jesus in your life, just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, Lord. And I receive your gift of grace, your gift of salvation. Re Forgive me, Lord. I, I, will, I make you a, the Lord and Savior of my life. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the family of God, brother. Welcome to the family of God, sister. Hallelujah. Uh, alam ko po, mayroon kayong mga pangailangan ngayong araw na to. Those who are watching right now, you have a need in your heart. Maybe some of you need healing. Let's use that name, the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. Mention His name. He is just close as the mention of His name. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive your provision right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, maraming salamat because uh, we receive your victory. Thank you, Jesus. We receive your victory. Tinatanggap namin ang iyong tagumpay, Panginoon. Thank you for what you have done for us today. Hallelujah. 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 May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, be with us all, now and forever. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, everyone.